everyone. It's good to have you tonight. Glad that you're here. If you want to grab a hymnal tonight, turn to hymn number 34, and we'll get started. Hymn number 34, and let's all stand. Hymn number 34, please. Living by faith, we'll sing the first and the last verse. We'll be singing Acapulco tonight, so join with me. Sing as loud as you can. On the first, here we go. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadows, sunshine, or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, Trusting, confiding in His great love. From all harm safe in His sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. Hymn number 34 on the last now. Sing it with me. I know that He safely will carry me through. Sing it now on the last. I know that he safely will carry me through no matter what evil besides. Why should I then care though the tempest may blow if Jesus walks close to my side? Living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in His great love. From all arms safe in His sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. Well, it is good to have you tonight. Hope you're living by faith. Trusting the Lord every step of the way that you go. I tell you, God is faithful no matter, no matter what may happen. Good to have you tonight. Let's go ahead and bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, I pray that you'll bless tonight as we gather once again here. We pray, dear little God, that your will be done. Lord, bless every teacher and every, every class that, that uh, is done tonight. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it is good to have you tonight. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I know it's been a <clears throat> very, very busy week for us, but it's rightly so. We're trying to get our house ready, and so uh, normally it would be busy. But uh, I know, uh, I know, without a doubt, uh, uh, things have been uh, uh, kind of he hectic, and uh, I hope things are getting better for sure. I want to just remind everybody about a few things. First of all, VBS, uh, June the 21st to the 25th. Uh, and there are some sign-up sheets out in the foyer concerning food and things like that. Also, uh, uh, just to remind everyone about the anniversary Sunday and uh, the June 27th. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a big day. If you have any questions about that, you can see Jim and Becky Summers, all right? Also, this coming Saturday, fellas, men to men, 9 o'clock here at the church, looking forward to that. Uh, this coming Saturday, fellas, 9 o'clock. And then June the 12th is the ladies' meeting, and that's also at 9 o'clock also. So do keep that in mind. And, uh, and uh, just a few announcements as well, uh, just to uh, keep you knowing what's going on. Of course, remember this coming Lord today as we gather together. Uh, Sunday school's at 10, worship service at 11, and of course we have an evening service, uh, and that is at 6 o'clock. That's on Sunday, and you might say, well, preacher, why do you have so many services on, on, on Sunday? Well, we don't have them uh, one, one at a time as far as uh, uh, Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday, uh, we, and so on Sunday, it's an opportunity that we have. Sunday is set aside to worship the Lord as a collective body of believers, and so we gather together to do that. But also, it's a good opportunity. While we have families here, while we have people here, we, we teach Sunday school, and, and then we have a worship service, and then we do it again in the evening service, and it's all for the purpose of 
uh, learning about the Lord, worshiping Him, and growing as in our fellowship one with another. And so, so that's one day out of the entire week. So, so we, we encourage you to uh, set a priority if you can. You that are online, uh, keep in mind, Sherwood, sure, sure obviously I think it's a great privilege to be able to listen online. Boy, if you can come to the house of God, it's so much better. So, so just wanted to uh, encourage you in that, on, that, on that end as well. Uh, this coming Sunday, something that is not new, but uh, it hasn't been done in a long time. You know what that is? Well, it's taking an offering. We're going to be doing that this coming Lord's Day. And so uh, we're looking forward to having the plate passed, looking forward to... Uh, having that uh, particular part of the worship service in our service. And so looking forward to that. So keep that in mind, okay? All right. Well, let's sing one more song. Uh, hymn number 115, please. Hymn number 115. <clears throat> hymn number 115, you can remain seated. I must tell Jesus, sing it with me on the first. Here we go. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever <clears throat> and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Boy, a good song, folks. Sing it out. Think about the words as you sing it on the last Oh, how the world, sing it with me, here we go. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus and he will help me. Over the world, the victory to win. Here we go now. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Bethany. <clears throat> well, I hope and pray that um, uh, you are doing well. Uh, I hope you had a good week. And um, we encourage you to be mindful of one another. Uh, and here in just a moment, we're going to be taking some prayer requests. And, um, but um, I would ask that you pray tonight for uh, Bernie Martin. He is still in rehab there at the called South Point. <clears throat> and um, just having a difficult time there. And so I would ask that you just pray for God's will to be done. Pray for Marie. Uh, also, okay. But also ask that you pray for uh, Bill Lawrence as he's recovering from his stroke, and uh, also for Dan Kurtz. Um, he found a new place and um, uh, kind of getting used to that. And um, um, we're going to be planning on picking both Bill and Dan up for the Dan up, and so uh, for church, and so. And I, I tell you, I'm sure you can imagine that's just going to be different. And so, uh, uh, thank God they're willing to come, and and I hope and pray that they might find uh, a blessing. 
as they come. Okay? All right. <clears throat> if you have uh, a prayer request tonight that you'd like to share with us uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer, let's go ahead and do that at this time. Anybody? Brother Jack? Please pray for Sister B. Not doing well tonight. Mary? Pray for Juanita. Uh, she did get her shots today, but it may be a little while before that takes effect. Also for Leonard. Pray for, pray for them both, okay? All right, someone else you have a prayer request to? Philip? <clears throat> All right. Pray for Jessica. And she has some back issues and looking to get some shots as well. And uh, so pray for her, okay? Brother Mike? Ratliff, okay. Pray for the Ratliff family. And uh, got a family member there that's having some problems. And so pray for the Ratliff family. All right, anybody else? Brother John? Okay. John's nephew's girlfriend uh, uh, is in the hospital and she's uh, really doing, uh, not, things are not going very well. And so pray, her name is Vicki. And so pray for God's will to be done. Uh, she, like I said, she's in the hospital and things are, Things are shutting down, and so just pray for God's will to be done, and no doubt pray for John's nephew as well. All right, anybody else? All right, church, may I remind you to pray, first of all, for your church, uh, and uh, as we uh, are uh, uh, coming up to the summer summer days, and, and um, so pray for that, we we are going to be taking the offering this coming Sunday. And, and so you know what that means, don't you? It means we need ushers. And uh, so looking to, uh, we have some that have volunteered and praise the Lord for that. And, and so um, uh, those that are, some of them that used to do it are, are not, uh, not here with us. And uh, so pray, uh, pray that we'll have some new volunteers uh, to take the offering on Sunday. But also pray just for the ministry as a whole and, and all that's going on and pray that God would bless. Also ask that you pray for our country and pray for our soldiers and the first responders, military, police, um, uh, all those. Uh, also pray for our missionaries. And um, tonight we just want you to be praying for uh, our missionaries as a whole, and um, just just God to provide and, and meet the needs of our missionaries, protect them where they may be at, and uh, so pray for our missionaries. All right, whether they're in your pew or, or an altar someplace, let's spend some time in prayer with about these you've heard, and, uh, and then I'll close this in prayer tonight. We'll get right into the Word of God, okay?
Father, thank you that we can call upon you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. And Lord, that you are a God that hears and answers prayer. And, and Lord, I thank you for the, even the song that we sang tonight. Uh, Lord, that we can, we can tell you all of our trials and troubles and, and our hardships. Because you can help us, Father. And I thank you for that. Lord, I pray that uh, you would bless your word tonight and encourage us from it. And uh, for those that are listening, and Lord, I just pray that uh, you would work in, in all of our hearts. You know what, what we need. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, tonight, if you would, uh, take your Bible and turn to 1 Peter chapter number 3. 1 Peter chapter number 3. If you remember, we've been talking about the, uh, con the promises of God, promises that describe who God is, promises that, that are, are what they are because of God alone, not because of you or I. Tonight's going to be different. Tonight is a promise, but it's conditional, which means this. You and I have a part in it. It is a choice, but is, it is a promise of God. And so tonight, let's, let's, I'm going to read the text, and then I'm going to ask God to help us, and then we'll get right into it tonight. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse number 10. For he that will love life, are you there? For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and eschew it. All right, here we go. Let us pray. Father, we sure need your help tonight. Lord, it would be no doubt, your will for our lives to do that which is right. For us to live in such a way that would bring glory and honor to you. And so tonight, Lord, help me to expound upon this. Help, help us to apply it to our lives that we might be different, that we might think different. And may your will be done in Jesus' name. Have you ever heard someone say, you know, I don't care where, what I do or where I go, trouble seems to find me. Or trouble follows me. Well, unfortunately, it might seem that there are people that are like that. But believe it or not, on the other hand, apparently tonight we've got a, a promise that, hey, you want good to be in your days. Hey, would you like to see good days? Hey, would you like to love life? That it might be a joy and a blessing to you? And no doubt everyone says, oh yes, I tell you, I'd, I'd love that. Well, apparently there is something that you and I can do about that. There is something that, that, that you and I ought to do in regards to those things. The promise is this, that you will love life and you will see good days. But it's conditional. I don't know about you, but um, it ought to be such that the life that you have, that you ought to love the life that God has given you. In other words, you live it in such a way that it is, it is an encouragement to you. It is a blessing to you. You are being a blessing. You love life. It, it, it is something that, that is, 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 is a joy to you to the best of your ability. It doesn't mean that you don't have bad days or anything like that. But, but by and large, you love life. And the Bible says... In verse number 10, for he that will love life. 
and see good days. If you're going to love life, if you're going to see good days, there are some things that you should do. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about them. Folks, I've dealt, with, I've dealt with a lot of people who's had a lot of problems with life. By the way, we probably all have. And I would dare say that a lot of times in, in my talking with people, I have, I have come across some of the reasons why, well, the reason why things are not going so well for you is because of da-da-da-da-da. There are some things that you're doing that doesn't help your life. It doesn't add to, uh, it doesn't promote good days in your life. In other words, what you're doing, the, the product of that or the fruit of that is not going to be good, but it will be bad. Folks, believe it or not, what we produce in life, a lot of times are a by, is, is, is a result of what we've been sowing. Now think about that. How you think, what you do, all of that plays a part in your days, your life, and, and, and the outcomes so often. And I'm, I'm talking just directly from you. And so, Peter encourages you and I, those of us that are saved, he says, hey, if you want to see good days, if you want to see, uh, or, or if you want... Uh, if you want to love life and see good days, number one, what he talks about is that of the tongue. In other words, he's referring to what comes out of our mouths. Well, is that a big deal? Well, apparently, it is a major big deal. Did you know the top three problem-causing issues of marriages is what comes out of the tongue? Did you know that? It's called communication. Believe it or not, how, how people get, a, get along with their neighbors, a lot of it has to do with what comes out of the tongue. I tell you, I was told not too long ago about a situation where uh, uh, this one particular guy was... was uh, saying something to another guy as they were driving down the road and it wasn't very good. The language wasn't very good. And supposedly, this guy was a Christian. Can I tell you that what could have happened from all of that because of what was said could have been really bad. I mean, we live in a world today where road rage is very common. And you and I ought to be careful what comes out of our mouth. But when it comes to our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and, and what's the point? Well, the Bible says here in, in our text, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. In other words... Don't say bad things. Don't say things that are, that are well, we could go to Ephesians chapter 4 and, 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 and uh, uh, the Bible talks about we are to, you know, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. So a lot of times people, we use corrupt communication. Can I tell you, that's evil. But not only that, I tell you, you know, the, uh, the words that we use to rip people apart and, and, you know, they use it on Facebook quite often, you know, and I tell you, it's horrible. Can I tell you, you will not see good days if that's how you communicate, if that's how you talk. I mean, we can make it even, even uh, personally at home. 
A husband won't see good days even in his own home with his wife if he doesn't know how to, if he doesn't say the right stuff. And, uh, and on and on we could go. It goes both ways. And so the value of learning to speak correctly. And the, and the ideal is this, and the point is this. In verse number 10 it says, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Have you ever thought to say something and you says, oh no, I shouldn't say that. And you caught it before it got out of your mouth. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Amen. We ought to learn to refrain. I know, I know you're thinking it, but you don't have to say it. Be careful what you say. In James chapter number three, it talks about uh, the tongue. And it says that it is an unruly member, by the way, cannot be tamed. And uh, the, criti the criticism is this, with the same tongue comes blessings and cursing, and James says, it ought not to be. And you and I ought to learn to be careful what we say. Even trying to try to be a blessing, sometimes we say the wrong things. But in this particular context, obviously it's evil, it's, it's, it's bad. And if you want to love life, if, and if you want to see good days, I tell you, may we learn to refrain our tongue from evil. But the Bible goes on and says, and his lips, that they speak no guile. They don't say things in a way that, oh, is, boy, it has some bad intent there to hurt, to, I mean, it, it's more than just what is said. I mean, this comes from, you know, the thoughts and, and you're wanting to hurt someone based upon what you're saying to them. There's, there's, a, there's a, you know, um, anger behind it. There's, there's, there's a manipulation behind it. And so, so, so Peter says, as Christians, we are not to do this. And the ideal is this. If you want to see good, day, good days, if you want to love life, I tell you, then we don't do this. We don't do it like this. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Bible also says in number two, again on the same subject, not so much the tongue, but that of evil. And that is this, get away from it. Get away from evil. Get away from bad things. By the way, believe it or not, in our society today, whether they think so or, or not, you can tell if it's good or bad. It's based upon the Word of God. I know we live in a society today where, you know, you know it's hard to tell what is good and what is bad. No, no, you really, it's really not hard if you judge it based upon what the Bible says. And I know there's so much has changed today in our society and what used to be bad isn't bad anymore. But I, but I tell you, it is based upon what the Bible says. And you and I are to get away, you know, as, as, as Peter puts it here, he says it like this. He says, let him eschew evil. The word eschew simply means to get away from it. You don't need to be around that stuff. And I, and I would dare say if we were to make application of this today, you know, going places that you ought not to go, how come? Because there's evil there. I mean, how plain can we get? Don't go to that party. Don't get with that crowd. Why? Because there's evil going on there and you don't need to be around it. How come? Because you do want to love life, don't you? And you do want to see good days. Well, come on, be careful. And so the ideal is this, don't, you know, get away from evil. I tell you, sadly enough, sadly enough, a lot of times people, people get, caught, get caught up uh, with the crowd that they're around. 
And it's not good. And so Peter says, hey, you want to see good days? Hey, you want to, you want to love life? Amen. Sure we do. But the ideal is this. Then you must get away from evil. You must control that tongue that you have. I met some people that just couldn't control their tongue. Can I tell you? They're miserable people. And guess what? No one wants to be around them. You don't know if you're going to be the one at the, at the, at the end of that tongue lashing that they give out. And so, so may we as Christians learn to have a tongue that speaks well, that says good things. Not, not evil communication, not corrupt communication, but that which is, that ministers grace. You see, this is the whole idea. How in the world can I love life? How in the world can I see good day? It is involved in being a blessing to people. That's what it's about. It's not about, okay, give me, give me, come on you folks, be a blessing to me. That's not what, that's not the intent here at all. It's, it's a matter of you, you know, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I tell you, I just want to be happy, so come on, give, 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 give to me. But that's not true happiness. Happiness is you trying to be a blessing to people. You learning to do what God would have you to do, and I tell you, it will involve in serving people. But as you do that, especially in this ideal of, I want to see good days, I want to, I, want to, I want to love life. You know, sadly enough, people get to the end of their life and they have all these regrets because they've done nothing with their life. But I tell you, when you learn to speak well, in other words, say good things, you learn to try to be a blessing. I tell you, the Bible speaks well of how important words is. Or to, 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 you know, how important they are. And I, especially the spoken word spoken at the right time can be like a, a refreshing water to a thirsty soul. Well, if you and I can learn how to say good things and say it at the right time, well, what a blessing it could be to other people. And can I tell you, you will enjoy life because of how God has used you. You know, I'm reminded of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. You know, it talks about the God of all comfort. Remember that? But did you know that through all of that, God comforting, comforting you because of all all the trials that you're going through, but you let God comfort you. But the Bible then goes on and says that you may comfort others by the comfort that you have received of the Lord. And I tell you, you don't do that without communicating. But learning to express God's grace to other people, the value of that is incredible. Can I tell you? You'll learn to love life. You'll learn, you will see that you will have good days because God will bless you. And I tell you, what a, what a joy that is. But I tell you, there are people that grow up and they're always disappointed. You know how come? Because they never get what they want. And they're always looking at other people say, that's not fair. Folks, that's not the way you and I are to live our lives. But we are to teach our children this. And by the way, it's a principle that, that every Christian should learn. And that is this. We ought to be more concerned about the needs of others than ourselves. And by the grace of God, we can learn how to be a blessing. And the result of that, at the end of the life, a lot of times people say this. And so where did that get you, buddy? What do you have to show for it? Can I tell you? At the end of that life, they'll, they'll, they can say this. I have learned to love God. I am content with what he's given me. That's what it's all about. It, it is not about money. It is not about acquiring things. 
Nothing wrong with things, nothing wrong with money. But sadly enough, what's happened is those things and those money, they have the person, and that's bad. And I tell you, without a doubt, Peter says, you want to love life? You want to see good days? Learn to deal with your tongue. Learn to, pers- uh, to get away from evil. Learn, I mean... And by the way, that's wrapped up in the goodness of God. In other words, why, why, why would you even want to get away from evil? Because you love him. Because you hate what, listen to me, what he hates. Because you've learned him and you've been around him. And so, so, so anything that is, is evil, anything, you don't want to be around it. That's the product of that. And boy, what a blessing that is. Can I tell you? Thank God. A lot of times people have avoided problems. You know how come? Because they was not there. Because they stayed away from those things. I tell you, thank God for that. I have story after story after story. I wish people would have stayed away from that party, from that guy. From, from that drinking binge. Boy, I wish they would have stayed away. What do I have left? Unfortunately, a sad account of what just happened. And so I tell you, you want to love life? You want to see good days? Learn to stay away from evil. Which, by the way, means this. You're going to have to learn to love good. You're going to have to learn to love good which, by the way, is God, which, by the way, is the worship of him, which, by the way, is his word. You're going to have to learn those things. That that's, that's really good. Oh, it's boring. You better learn that it's good. Prayer, it's good. Amen. Well, we're not done yet. Number three. He not only says, hey, if you want to love life, you want to see good days, I, come on, deal with your tongue. Number two, get away from evil. Number three, oh, this should be an easy one. Do good. That's what it says. Here it goes. Verse number 11, let him eschew evil and do good. You know, it's not a matter of just getting away from evil. Come on, do good. Do good. Boy, what a blessing it is. By the way, that involves other people. Do good. Do good by the Lord, but do good. Do good by doing what he says, but do good. The Bible says, of course, you know, in in Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, right? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse number 10, the Bible says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I tell you, when you and I follow the will of God, that's good. When you and I walk and walk with the Lord, that's good. Do good. The ideal here is to do good towards people. Do good. The testimony ought to be this. You ought to do good. Do good. Do good towards people. Do good by doing what God would have, but do good. That's what ought to to characterize you and mine. How come? Because the results of that is you will learn to love life by doing good, not evil. There's been people all their life, all they've done is evil. They've stolen They've cheated, they've lied, and they've lived life to the fullest according to them. Can I tell you, at the end, now they may say, oh, I've had the time of my life. But can I tell you, look behind them. Look what they've left. Look at the lives that they've destroyed. Look at the, look at the, uh, uh, a poor example that they've set, the influence that they have, have, have given towards other people. 
I tell you, they, they would have to shake their heads. Well, I, I didn't do very good with them, but I had a good time. But normally people like that, they're selfish people. They live just for themselves. But that's not what God wants you and I to do. Our lives cannot be lived selfishly. But according to what the Bible says, we are to live unto him who died and rose again for us. And so we do that. One of the ways is learning to do good. To do good. Well, what is the good thing to do? What is the right thing to do? To do good. I tell you, not too many people are going to complain when you do them good. What a blessing that is. But then also, look at this. The Bible says this. In verse 11, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it or go after it. That's what it is. So he's talking about peace. Hmm. Well, we are to do good and we are to seek for peace. You know, it's almost as if the context says there's a troubled world. And you and I, we have a choice, right? But you and I ought to choose for peace. You and I, instead of, you know, punching back, we ought to do good. Well, I mean, they ripped me off, so I'm going to rip them off. No, how about you doing good? And so, and so even when it comes to peace, sure, I know that, that uh, and, and I go back to the example that, that, that I have, you know, driving down the road and someone cuts you off, right? So what do you do? Well, you don't stick your hand out the window and flip them off. That's not good. If anything, that incites. Or, or you don't roll down your window and say some choice words. Well, according to what the Bible says there, we probably should just turn left. How about that? Just turn left. Just get away from it. Because, because you, you, hey, why? Well, I want peace. Ever had an argument before? Oh, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> I've had plenty. Uh, can I tell you, it, it has changed my whole outlook when it comes to my wife. Early on, I didn't have a clue what communication was about. You know, if we were to disagree, guess what my intent was? I was going to win, Marlia. I was going to win. I don't care what, I was going to win. That was, that, that was the goal, right? Can I tell you, that's not the goal for me to win. How about peace? So we try to work it out. We try to compromise because I want peace. Amen. When it comes to, I have a neighbor. Uh, I, have, I have plenty of neighbors. But I met a neighbor across the fence. Never met this guy before. But he comes over. Who, who's that guy? Back in the day there was a show and he would, he would talk to the other guy over the fence and you're going to see his face right here. Well, yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, that's why it was in this case. I mean, all I could see was that right there. And uh, he told me his name, and I told him my name. And, and uh, he says, hey, hey, uh, uh, welcome into the neighborhood. Hey, I, I just got an issue. I just got here. Come on. And I said, uh-oh, we're about to get started here. Get ready to rumble. No, no, nothing like that. But he says... Did you know that every time you turn your lights on in the back, it shines right into our eyes when we sit on our deck? I didn't know. I mean, like I said, I, I haven't lived here that long. I don't know where the lights are shining or what the case was. So 
I could have been a jerk. She says, well, deal with it, buddy. This is my property. I'll do what I want to with it. But I didn't want that. I wanted peace. I, you know, I said to myself, you know, there's more than one way to light a backyard. And so guess what I did? That night even, I went and got a ladder, got up there and just took the bulb out. Because I don't need it right now. And right now, that's not my priority. I'm trying to fix the inside right now. And so we only got one light in the backyard. But, but I'm sure he was right. I mean, these are floodlights. I mean, these things are beaming and they're bright. And, and, uh, and so I just took it out and, and all that. How come? Because I wanted peace. That's all. Now, he might have walked away and said, well, I got him. That doesn't make any difference. That's not the point. It's for peace. It's for peace. You see, unfortunately, not everyone's going to agree with you. And by the way, if there's ever any trouble, it should not be your fault. Hey, some people can be a jerk, right? Some people can. But the ideal is this, make sure it's not you being the jerk. You want peace. And so, so we are to pursue peace. We are to seek for peace. Okay, what's, what's the answer here? And, and let's try to, try to find a peaceable way to deal with this. And, 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 and so, I, you know, you, we, we are to go after it. Now, there may be a time where, you, you know, you know, I love what Romans chapter 12 says. Remember? <laughs> for as much as possible... Live peaceably with all men. That's what it says. You know, and I can just hear people say, yeah, well, it wasn't possible, sorry. Well, without a doubt, you, as far as on our part, we are to seek for peace. How come? Because that makes for loving life. You know what? I expect to probably have a friend back there. I expect that one of these days... Because what's more important than my light is the opportunity to... I don't know if he even knows the Lord. I don't, I don't know. I don't have a clue. Maybe one of these days I'm going to have to help him. I don't know. Maybe one of these days they're going to have to help me. I don't know. And so we're going to seek for peace. You see, obviously James talks about other things. But here specifically... He challenges you and I. And, and it's a promise. Hey, a promise to love life and to see good days. Well, come on, I've lived long enough that I've actually been able to see some good days with my family, with my ministry. Uh, and, and so I can understand what he's talking about. And some of you, you've lived a long time. You could probably say, yeah, I know what those good days are like. Because you're going to have to live a little bit, right, to experience the good days. You have to live a little bit to, to see life. And, but the thing about it is, loving life has to do inside. Seeing good days is the fruit or the byproduct of you making good decisions comes from inside. So I don't know about you. I'm so very thankful there's an opportunity to love life and see good days. I don't know about you. I would rather live that way than the miserable life the other way. I know too many people that are miserable. Miserable in their marriage, Miserable in, their, in this life in general. But there's a reason why. There is a reason why. Because I don't know about you, we serve a good God. Amen? Oh, you better believe it. Don't, don't, don't put it on him that, well, the reason why I'm miserable is because of him. Oh, no. God's a good God. And you follow him, I promise you, he'll fulfill your life. Not squelch it. Without a doubt. And so Peter says, want to see good days? Want to love life and see good days? 
then we ought to pay attention to these things. Watch what you say. Okay, let's get away from evil. You ought not to be a part of that anyway. Do that which is good. Ah, oh, that ought to be your character. Just good. Just doing good. Just want, just want to be a blessing. Doing good. And then without a doubt, may we seek for peace. Yeah, you'll have opportunity to make a choice. Tonight, may we all learn, I want to love life. How about start right now? I want to see good days. Start now. Start now. Do what God would have you to do. Let us pray. Father, I pray tonight. Lord, thank you so much for just life. But Lord, it's not just a matter of just living and dying. There's this thing between born and dying that it's called life. And, and Lord, you want us to live it according to your will. And you want us to fulfill, to fulfill that will. And oh, Lord, there will come as a result of that joy and peace. Dear God, help us to learn to love life. The life that you've given to us. And Lord, help us to see good days as a result of it. Lord, to, to be able to look back and be thankful to be able to enjoy life because of making right choices. And we can all say it's been good. Lord bless us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a good night.